What's up, guys? This is Prozac Morris here, reporting from my ghetto bedroom laboratory. I'm making this video to elaborate a little further on a statement I made when I was reviewing the Roland JP08 synthesizer. I made a comment about expanding the potentials of the voicing on a synthesizer that's limited, namely the Arturia Micro Brute, uh, which we have right here in front of us. Uh, I've owned it for about a year now. I love it. I've used it vigorously on many tracks. I've used it a lot on my upcoming record that's about to be released on vinyl, courtesy of Collective Resonance Records, called Prehistoric Future Babe. So there's a little shameless plug for you. How do you like that? Anyways, today I'm going to talk about two techniques that you can... Um, you can use this. Now, I will throw out a disclaimer before I go any further that uh, this is not for the faint of heart, as I've said before. If you're the kind of cat who enjoys the music making process over the sound design process, if you kind of find trying to get your sound right a pain in the ass, like a lot of people do, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, you're not a weirdo like me. It's good. You should be grateful. You don't toss and turn at night wondering how to uh, harmonically divide oscillators properly among 16 of them, so don't worry about it. But if you're a weirdo like me and you do enjoy the sound design process as much as if not even more sometimes as the music making process then hey keep it locked because you might get a kick out of this you might be doing this already uh or this may inspire you and that's what i'm hoping for so i'm going to share this with you guys two techniques uh the first is a really obvious one um but it does take a lot of uh courage and gusto and it's kind of a pain in the in the bootox if i'm being honest but you know, you power through it and you, it comes up with some great results. And um, at one point, I'm not going to literally do it in front here, like walk you through it step by step. I'll kind of give you the gist of the technique. But uh, at, after that fact, I'm going to go through some sounds that I've made doing this technique and kind of can see the results that it does bring to your sonic palette. It's pretty dope. So um, I'm starting here with just a raw saw wave here from the Micro Brute. Uh, which is just got a great color and texture to it, unlike any I've ever heard in a plug-in of any kind. So I wanted one day to be able to use that sawway to play some chords, but sadly you can't. So I found myself uh, recording the chords with like silent, like just a, you know, standard soft synth. And then I kind of like wrote down on a piece of paper, because I'm not the most savvy key player, uh, what the notes were in the chords and I recorded them individually and I noticed that that sounded a lot better than silence did So I just got the bright idea that why don't I create a, a kit? So to speak that I can just go to an EXS 24 where I can recall that patch at any time and get those those Oscillators that I really like and then you can kind of you know go into EXS 24 and do stuff further I'm jumping the gun anyways. I've got a GTR Tuner pulled up. It's a Waves plugin. You can use any tuner you like, or you can, if you don't have a plugin tuner, just use your cell phone. There's free apps. If you don't have a smartphone, then don't use a tuner. Just be badass and just use your ears, or just be totally out of tune. It really doesn't matter because we're you know experimenting here. Anyways, I'm gonna start with the raw saw and go all the way down to as low as it can go, and I start at the F. And it's not really sonically pleasing or audible, but I just, uh, I'm going to be a sandal wearing hippie about this and I just start as low as it goes. And I uh, ideally hold it down for about 45 seconds to a minute, but I'm not going to do it that long. I'm just going to kind of give you a taste here. So you. Isn't that lovely? Uh, get used to it because you're going to be hearing that for the next two hours if you're going to do this the sandal wearing hippie purest way that I. Uh, like to do it. So uh, anyways, you, you go through the octaves here. And now when you start to get up to where your tuner, and I don't know if you can see the tuner. Um, yeah, I'll change angles in a bit here. But I'm going to go like up where the tuner can actually detect what note you're on. And what I like to do is not just leave it static. Like you can do that if you'd like to just get the tuning perfect, of course, by all means. Uh, but the brute here has got a little uh, fine tuner in the back that I like to kind of slowly fiddle with and create that simulated vibe of an old kicked around synthesizer that's been traded nine times on eBay in its lifespan and now it's still somehow making sound but it's got its own charm and character to each note and so 
uh, I'll do that. And plus you get bored just holding down a note. You kind of want something to do for 45 seconds to a minute time and time again. So it, and, um, yeah, it's got a really cool result because now you end up with all these really cool little subtle variations in your notes. So I'll kind of show you something like that I would do in that sense. I'll hold down a C here a little higher in the octaves and I'll watch my tuner and see when it detects it perfectly and when it's out and kind of try to play on that. And, you know, I, you know, you get it. And just, I don't know if you heard it. I mean, it went out kind of far. I, I threw in a little, I used the mod wheel to bring in a little LFO modulation, a really slow one and a very subtle amount at that. And to um, just kind of create that like aged movement that old synthesizers tend to have. This actually by nature is a really stable synthesizer. If you know, you tune it, the tracking gets a little weird sometimes when you go like really high or really low, the tuning can waver, but this synthesizer in particular is really sturdy. So I like to do that to just create that like, you know, uncalibrated vibe. And so you can apply that ideal to any other thing you want to do. You want to get the charm of the filter. So you want to like create an oscillator. So what, what, what we're doing here essentially is we're turning our DAW into a synthesizer of its own. So each one of these recordings are going to be an oscillator of their own. Think of them like that. So you don't just have to stop at one. You can go crazy and start stacking them and stuff like that and create multi-oscillator patches out of your sampler and your DAW. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and it sounds a lot better than plugins, uh, in my opinion. So um, anyways, so you can set up like a filter decay type of thing here. And just to, like assume that you're going to do this for each and every note from all the way down to like the lowest F to the highest F that it can possibly go to in the synthesizer one by one. But by having this envelope modulation on each one, it's going to have a really cool, you know, effect when you're finished with it. I'm just showing you this as an example. Um, So I don't know how long I held that down for, but uh, I would do something like that, maybe similar, maybe try to vary it differently um, with each and every note. And by the end of that, you end up with a stack of different recordings. Uh, I'm not sure how many it is. I think it's like 80 something that you end up with, uh, 88 maybe, because that's like those big keyboards. But I don't know for certain. I've never really counted. I just know it's a shit ton. And uh, excuse my language. But... Now, what you'll do then is you'll take those recordings of the individual notes and you'll assign them to your sampler of choice. And in that sampler, you can take it further. You can stretch the boundaries of what they're already doing if you haven't already. So if it's a static oscillator that's just playing the sustained on tune note that you, know, you chose to do, you can take that recording now. Now that's in your sampler, start applying LFOs and things like that. And its filter, even though it's probably going to sound digital, it's not going to have the analogness of the Steiner Parker that this has or whatever filter your analog synth has that you're trying to capture. Uh, if you didn't, if you just want the raw sound, you didn't maybe apply fill, any kind of filter movement. Uh, you know, the I'll, I'll show you some stuff that in the DAW, you can kind of keep an analog vibe to it. Maybe some tips that will help you preserve the analogness of the, uh, you know, sound that you're trying to preserve, you know, the, the whole point of this. So... Uh, let's take a little look into what's going on in EXS 24. Sweet Jesus, what are we looking at? Well, folks, what we're looking at is the uh, process I explained a second ago, the result you end up with. Each one of these individual regions is an audio file uh, edited, of course, uh, you know, appropriately of each note from the micro brew and a couple from the cork volca uh, that i did at another time 
And uh, now what you do with these, and again, you can translate this to any DAW, any sampler of choice, you know, anything that you're working in that you think has the capabilities to um, hold these many, house these many samples, you'll you know highlight all these and convert them into a sampler tracker, import them into your sampler. And if you don't know how to do that in Logic, you I can't do it because I'm recording a live audio feed as I'm shooting this on my very ghetto rig Steadicam. Don't judge me. Anyways, you're going to hit Control E and highlight the regions. That'll put them into EXS24 and you end up with this. There we go. If you did this correctly, you hit your edit and you will see each one of these blocks is the audio regions represented above and they are designated to the appropriate note. Now pay attention when you're doing this. If you want to do this the crazy way and go through each note organically and individually, make sure you're not doing the same one twice. It's kind of easy to go brain dead while you're sitting there and recording the same sound for 35 to seconds to a minute, you know, each, you, you can kind of lose it. So pay attention and make sure that you end up with the appropriate chromatic order by the end of what you're doing and you should be good to go. So now your sound is loaded up in the sampler. I've maxed out its voices to 64 voices. Now that, like I said in the review, I, with a little hard work and ingenuity, found a way to turn a monosynth into a 64 voice polysynth. And there you have it. Now, granted, I did not open up my synthesizer and apply some kind of strange, funky divide down technique to it. And no, I did not Frankenstein it. I wish I could do that. That would be rad. But this was the next best thing that I could think of. And so now what I will do, um, I will show you the advantages. Now, not only can you play chords with this, which let's go ahead and enough of the anticipation, right? Oh, so worth it. And uh, yeah, if you're a fan of analog synths, hopefully I'm not insane and you can kind of hear the difference between just the raw oscillators of a sound of a patch that is obviously containing raw organic oscillators as opposed to just a soft synth and their raw oscillators. I don't get the same thing. So anyways, what we'll do now is I'm going to go through and just kind of tweak some settings in this and you can kind of hear the advantages of taking these oscillators and turning them polyphonic, not only when you're playing chords, but even if you're just um, adding a lot of release to a sound and getting a long sustain, th there's no choke, or at least if you're, you know, as long as you're not 64 notes deep, which is kind of hard to get to unless you're playing like black MIDI or something. But um, it's really nice, just that sustain of the notes and the harmonics that creates, and uh, hopefully you can hear that. I'm, uh, I'm not going to sit here and go through each little thing you can do in EXS24. Maybe I'll make another video for that if you'd like, of uh, just really bizarre sampling techniques that I've um, acquired. I, I've been known to do really weird things with this plugin. Uh, I, I like to sample like my girlfriend's voice. That's not so weird, but I'll, I'll sample her just uh, sustaining like a note and I'll take that into Melodyne, tune it up a bit, throw it in EXS24, layer that with these raw oscillators, create patches that way. Again, like I mentioned, use think of your DAW like a synthesizer of its own with unlimited oscillators and create waveforms like that. I want to, I want to do a video where I go into that more in depth. So if, if you would like to see a video like that, let me know in the comments and uh, I'll, I'll hop to it. Okay. So now I know I digress. I can record a sample of them whenever he's in the mood. Come on, Rue. Got it.
And there you have it. Um, I hope that you get an impression of the painstaking process. Uh, be willing to go through a lot of hours uh, just sitting there and recording the same thing over and over again. But if you enjoyed what that sounded like, which I hope you did, um, that's what you end up with. And to my ears, it does sound a lot better than a software synthesizer. I'm in no position right now financially. I can't even afford real monitors. How the hell am I going to buy an analog polysynth? <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I do. That's 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 my workaround. And again, if you want to apply a, a simpler kind of shortcut version of that same technique, feel free. If you're already doing this, uh, and you know, hopefully it gave you some ideas. And if you're not already doing this, hopefully it gave you some ideas. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll just go through a few more sounds that I've done that, that are actually like developed patches and you can kind of hear the results of, of a finished sound using this technique. And these are all use raw oscillators from either the Micro Brute or the Volca or both. And I will show you that now. Here's the first. And I'll just go through all of them. I won't stop between and ramble. Okay, that was weird. 
closing out the video here, I just want to add uh, one more, share one more technique with you guys that I like to use to add some pizzazz to my analog mono synth here. Um, it has to do with adding some more voices, some more oscillators to the mix. Uh, as most analog synths do have an audio input jack uh, in them, and the Arturio Micro Brute it does, and um, they kind of encourage you to run drums or vocals through it. What I like to do is that and run synthesizers through it as well so that they can, especially digital ones, can get a taste of the analog filter and that helps uh, kind of forge an analog sound out of them. So I've got a Korg Triton here, which is very loved by not only myself, but a lot of people in the late 90s and early 2000s. And I've got a uh, kind of wannabe analog patch that I've made out of two oscillators from this. So uh, and also the MIDI out from the Korg Triton is controlling the MIDI in of the Brute. So what's happening there is the keys here, the note on messages from the keys from the Triton are not only going to play the Triton sound, but they're going to be able to control the Brute as well. So that's how I'm going to combine the oscillators here. And you, you feel free to do the same or any combination of this idea in your own time and in your own experiments. You'll probably get some really cool results. Uh, here's the Triton just by itself coming through the uh, circuitry of the Brute. Okay, and uh, now I'll show you just the uh, micro brute, the saw wave being controlled by the Korg here, thanks to our MIDI connection. I'm going to add some of the same LFO. Okay. So uh, they're responding kind of the same to the modulation wheel. Now I'm going to combine the two, and you're going to hear what happens uh, when the analog oscillator fuses with the digital oscillators. It really does provide a cool rub and a dissonant kind of tone. I'll start with the Triton, and I'm going to bring in the Brute. Okay, so as you can hear, uh, it's uh, got a little bit more of a character to it. Not not only the Triton sound, but the brute sound as well. You you know you can't necessarily get a sound like that out of the brute, given the limitation of the oscillators. It does have a sub oscillator, which if you bring that in, that sound will get even gnarlier. Uh, and this synthesizer is very digital sounding. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to fake an analog sound with it, and still, if it was just running straight line in um, to an interface or something, it, it would not sound analog, to, at least in my opinion. Uh, I tend to run this through a preamp and a compressor to get get more dirt out of it, I guess. But the two together, really nice combination. And you can do this, like I said, with any combination of gear. Uh, if you're trying to um, add to the potential of your the limitations of your more basic mono analog synth. So uh, I'm going to end the video just kind of tweaking a little bit of what I've got going on here, giving you a, a better idea of the kind of palette that the two together can create. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for watching um, and especially for responding to my last video. I did a review of the JP08 synthesizer by Roland, and I didn't expect that many people to reach out. That was really cool. So thank you for that. Feel free to ask any questions or any opinions that you have about uh, this video, anything I grazed over, anything you want to know more about, hit me up and uh, I'll be you know, happy to respond to you guys. And uh, so with that being said, here's a little taste of the sound of combining these two. And I hope you got a, a little inspiration out of this video. All right. Peace.
Meow, 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 meow.